A brand new list just dropped that is showing apparently the best finance YouTube channels. And I guess you could probably guess who is on the list if you know anything about YouTube finance. Because in reality, this is not a top YouTube channels, the greatest YouTube channels to go for financial advice. But not, you know, everyone who's saying who make this content would say not financial advice. But it's not that. It's just a popularity contest, right? It's basically... Who has a lot of subs on YouTube that talks about finance? Which I guess shouldn't shock anyone. I haven't seen this list yet, so I would assume that just going off of this popularity contest type thing, that Graham Stephan is probably number one. I, I think he's still the biggest U finance YouTube channel there. I would say Andre Jicks on there. Uh, meet Kevin, probably. Jer Jeremy LaFay, the financial education guys. And then there's a couple channels that I know the names of, kind of, but I don't watch them at all. So who knows? But this is the list right here. And uh, 10 best YouTube channels for finance. And they start off here saying, you know, as per a 2022 CNBC report, 15% of adults in the U.S. lose $10,000 annually due to the lack of financial literacy. Now, that's a considerable loss, highlighting the significance of gaining financial knowledge. So scrolling down through the finance YouTube channels to garner your financial knowledge can be a great idea, right? Now, for this... I have a huge question for what this number is actually trying to say, because if it's saying, you know, where, how are they losing $10,000 annually? Are they picking stocks and losing at picking stocks? Because that's a losing game to get into, which is basically what all of these YouTube channels kind of talk about a lot of them, I guess. So, you know, would it be better to watch them if they're going to tell you to pick more stocks? You're going to lose more money, right? So I don't know, but there is a weird thing when you look at, Gen Z looking at finance. I have a chart here. I'll edit it in here. Uh, you can see this 34% of Gen Z gets uh, seeks financial advice from TikTok, 33 seek it from YouTube, and 24 seek it from a financial advisor. So obviously, social media, the internet is the number one resource for Gen Z for us to go and look at financial advice and get all this stuff. It makes sense grew up on the internet the internet's not a foreign thing and it's easier to do that than to talk to a financial advisor although a financial advisor is still kind of you know pretty dumb to talk to if you give a financial advisor your money to invest for you all they're doing is siphoning funds from you or siphoning fees from you to put in their own pocket they're not really interested in you know doing anything for you and you lose a lot of money paying a financial advisor so i wouldn't even go down that route Watching YouTube videos and figuring out finance is better than a financial advisor. But let's look at this list they got here. Uh, so up first, Graham Stephan, who would have guessed it right? He's the most subbed one. I'm pretty sure he's still the biggest one. Uh, you no, know, Graham Stephan, not a bad channel. Uh, very repetitive channel, though. I've stopped watching him just because it's the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And once you've learned the basics, like Graham is very kind of basic index fund stuff investor which is good but as content it doesn't really do anything right there's only so many times you can say buy the index buy this uh do these types of things work with your credit cards doing this and make the same credit card video every few months so graham stefan i do think is a you know decent kind of figure for finance he's not crazy he's not some like insane buy my course to, you know, be a millionaire in three days trading stocks. So I don't think he's terrible for number one. But again, it's like a popularity contest. And then you got Andre Jick here, number two. Basically now a Graham copycat, right? With the occasional Bitcoin crypto video. So not much different there. I don't think Andre is, you know, a special finance thing. CoffeeZilla, I think, had videos on Andre a long time ago talking about him and YouTube automation stuff like stealing content. So, you know, not the not the greatest person to kind of have number two here, but he makes the list number two. Nate O'Brien, uh, not really sure who that is. I don't think I've ever watched a video from him. Whiteboard Finance, again, don't know. Ryan Scribner, I don't know again. So obviously, you know, a lot of these people on here, I don't, I don't really watch them. I know the names. Like I know Nate O'Brien, uh, Whiteboard Finance, this guy, never heard of. And here is Financial Education. This is Jeremy LaFave. He's 
probably the worst investor on YouTube. If you just look at his track record, it's funny to see, you know, how he tries to play with his numbers to make it seem like he's a winner and make it seem like he's doing so great and that you should buy his course and definitely subscribe to his Patreon. Uh, I think I'm going to do a, a video, you know, kind of going in on that because a lot of people actually do that where they're kind of manipulating their numbers, make it seem better than it really is. Uh, but He's got to be the worst one on YouTube. So the fact that he's on this list is just not good. Uh, he's probably got the record for investing in bankrupt companies and, you know, companies that are dropping 80%, 90%, 60%, 70%. Like, he takes that crown without a doubt in buying bankrupt companies, trash companies that collapse, and then he celebrates when they go up 40% after they drop 90 So, you know, it's not actually a win like that. You're still down massively, but... The fact that he's on this list probably tells you right here that it's not a very good list. It's not something you should look at and say, God, I got to watch everyone on this list. I'm going to learn so much. And here you got financial diet, mapped out money, debt-free millennials, and <laughs> fine Grant Cardone. So I guess no meet Kevin. That's kind of shocking because, I mean, I would imagine meet Kevin should be on here. But to end this with Grant Cardone, if financial education jeremy lafave on here wasn't enough to make you question this list a bit then grant cardone should make you guarantee that this is the worst list known to man and you probably shouldn't watch anybody on here for financial advice because they included grant cardone he's what he says some of the things he says are absolutely insane if i made 400 grand a year i would be embarrassed with myself as a husband a father basically as a human being you guys haven't done the math because you cannot live on 400 grand a year. But I guess that is the list that these guys have come through. I mean, it's nothing crazy, right? It's just the big YouTubers in finance. I think, honestly, I think the only person on here that would be decent to try, if you haven't known anything about finance and you're just getting in, is probably Graham. Like, right, Graham is very beginner friendly, kind of basics, get out there, try and learn some stuff. And as you go on and you learn more and you start to understand more, you start to realize that you don't need to watch Graham's videos. They're very repetitive and they're they're just sticking to the basics and beginner stuff, which, you know, is good to start with. But eventually you can only watch the same thing so many times. So I think that's the only one on here that's really decent of watching if you're just getting started. The other guys that I don't know, can't really talk about, but it is crazy to see that finance YouTube has really fallen i feel like i the big where we had uh, graham meet kevin andre jick these guys at least i think in like 2019 2020 before everything started going parabolic and like the stock market was on fire and everyone sh shifted to becoming stock gurus i do feel like there was a lot of good information in graham stefan stuff and andre jick stuff they basically make the same content but those guys, even meet Kevin here was all right. But those two, I feel like there was good information there for people who are just getting started, who know how to know about finance and investing their money and doing things and trying to do things the right way, that they had the the right foot and they started there and you could have learned a lot. That's how kind of I started was watching Graham Stephan and watching his videos and getting his breakdown and then branching out to more people and different people who know more things or talk about different things. But to see where YouTube finance has gone now, it's crazy to see like everyone's just shilling their Patreon, their courses to pick stocks and become millionaires in three days instead of actually kind of saying, you know, the simple things of buy an index and wait don't get rich quick because if you're trying to get rich quick, you're going to stay poor for a while. But this list ultimately, you know, 10% of it's decent. I would call Graham an all right thing to put on there. But everyone else, you know, do they deserve to be in this top 10 list? I don't know. I don't think so. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next.